right? So just to back it up, it's Professor Hugo de Garris. I think you originally saw him in that film called Singularity or Bust, where he yes. was in there with Dr. Ben Gertzel, who we've had on the show as well. And um, in that movie, which I think you quote in your book, Scary mm -hmm. Smart, which everyone needs to get a copy, and I listen to it on Audible, it's amazing, and Mo, Mo recites it in his beautiful voice. Um, and Hugo wrote a book called The Artelec War, and he has kind of game played this in his mind for many years, for decades, and he believes in the future there will be two groups. I think it's the Cosmos and the Artelex. The, the Cosmos believe in humans, mm -hmm. and I think the Artelex believe in building these AIs. Mm -hmm. And he says it will get to a point where they will be two groups and there will be a giga death, is what he says, a billion people dying as these two groups fight it out for the winner. Yeah. When the winner is obvious to you, will be the Artelec group anyways. Yeah, I, th I think that, that you're starting to see that already on social media. We're not killing each other, but you know, I, I can guarantee you this video would have endless controversy and you know a conversation around okay is this happening is this not happening you know is this good for us is this not, is this not good for us because at the end of the day you know we're humans we have different po points of view and we have if we have different points of view we have different uh, uh, convictions and we are so well trained that if what you're saying is not what i'm convinced of then you're an idiot right and and so it's a bit it's a tiny bit of a war when you really think about it, but it can grow quite big. It can go, grow quite big, again, not in the form of a war, but just wait uh, five, six years when we get massive job losses right. uh, to artificial intelligence and it becomes a clear war. If someone took your job, remember how uh, uh, you know, black cab drivers here in the, in the UK re responded to Uber, yeah. okay? Do that at a massive scale. And, and, and it is a complete rede redesign of the fabric of our society. Look at the way that, say, World War I started. I mean, it was a shot fired in a random country that really didn't really have a lot to do with what happened afterwards, but it was an event that, that really lit up everything, and before you know it, everyone's choosing sides, and you've got a massive world Absolutely. war between superpowers. This event could be a, a, a variety of things. It could be job losses, or it could be a computer kills a human in some weird isolated incident. It could be a variety of things, right? And mistakes will happen, which is one of the things so, you so, put in so, your book. So we, ha we have to think about this, and we have to understand that while you and I are spending the, you know, this hour or couple of hours chatting about this, there is someone investing hundreds of millions of dollars to, to create a criminal AI, right? Because you know, if you want to make money, you rob the bank, right? If you're a criminal, you go to where the money is. Now, if I told you that the biggest power on planet Earth is intelligence, and now you have access to it by writing a few lines of code, okay? Uh, you know, a lot of people are investing in that, which raises a very interesting question, because the only way to protect an, against a super intelligent criminal is to have a super intelligent policeman, which again is the back to the first inevitable. Huh? So, so we can't halt the, the, the progress of AI if we cannot ensure that there is no criminal attempts to gain superpower with AI. And, and the problem is that element of trust. Can we, can we include criminals in this conversation and say, hey, keep robbing banks, just don't create a super intelligent criminal, okay? That's not gonna happen. So th that continuation of, uh, of development of a super intelligent virus, a super intelligent hacker, a super intelligent AI of some sort that will do something that can gain its developer a lot of money, it's happening as we speak, and I believe that patient zero will be one of those attacks, right? Will be, one, will be something that, that disrupts, sadly, only our economy is what we care about. You know, so politicians will respond when economy is disrupted enough, but it's inevitable. What do you think that'll look like, honestly, and when do you think it'll happen? I think it will look something like 2008, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the economic crisis, the, sub, um, the subprime mortgage crisis, uh, the surprise, the uh, panic, the uh, fallout. Right. Stock uh, markets off 25, 30%, yeah, the recession, disbelief. massive yeah. job losses. Yeah. 
And then what will have caused that? Will we even know it's AI related? Uh, there will be a lot of debate that basically, uh, you know, tries to speculate. Then the, exactly like with COVID, there will be a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, sort of hiding, uh, you know. So COVID's the blueprint right in front of our eyes. In front of our eyes. I mean, <laughs> there will be, you know, attempts to blur the data or sway the data a little bit. Uh, you know, because politicians want to say, hey, I'm still the hero, this was a mistake, whatever. And, you know, I, I, my biggest fear, honestly, is, is, is that we go back after that and be where we are now with COVID, because where is COVID? You know, so, so understand this, understand this. This really shocks me. Hmm? Have people become so blinded by what is told in the media that we don't, we cannot think on our own anymore? Right? And it's quite interesting because COVID vanished. It's as if, almost as if the virus decided, not a very nice planet, let's disappear. Okay? But that's not the case at all. There are still cases. Okay? There is still a virus. Hmm? And just as soon as we stopped talking about it, it became forgotten. And this is why I'm so actively trying to say, talk about AI. Because there is, there is a virus or there is a threat if you want okay and it is progressing and we're just not putting the spotlight on it hmm? and the idea is if we put the spotlight on it it will be as big a conversation as it was when we were locked when as covid was when we were in lockdown and that's what we need we need and 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 by the way we could you know i i i want to be proven wrong i want to be uh, you know seen as an idiot just have the conversation just have the conversation and prove those who have lived inside the lab with the machines, prove us wrong. And when you prove us wrong, we will all sit back and say, sorry, we were idiots, just let's go on with life. I doubt very much that we are idiots. I, I really think that what humanity is missing here is that we've never ever before created something like this. So as you compare it to other singularities before, you know, uh, uh, there are lots of people that will say, but the printing press was a moment of singularity. Yes, it was. You couldn't predict what would happen after books are readily available when you never imagined a world where books were not. You know, when you lived in a world where books were not and you never imagined a, wor a world where books are. Th this is true, okay? But there are differences with this singularity that are very profound. We've never created a nuclear weapon that is capable of creating other nuclear weapons. This is what, what, what people need to start talking about. We taught those machines to code. We told them to write other AIs, to develop other AIs. They're procreating in human uh, terminology. Very soon, they'll be not, they will not need us to write the next AI, they will write the next AI. There was, I don't remember who, uh, who, uh, who said this, but it's a very logical view that artificial intelligence is going to be the last human innovation, period. We're not gonna be innovating anymore. The most intelligent being on the planet, which is going to be a machine in five, 10, 20, 100 years time, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm saying within five to, to 10 years, it's 100 years another being is gonna be innovating. We're not going to be innovating. We're not gonna be in control. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy.
I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who want to join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year is going to be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that want to join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm going to tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. So let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days, but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?